what I have here with me is a cheap laser projector that I got off eBay for around 150 US dollar and out of the box it's only support playing ILDA file off an SD card which is pre-born so my goal for this project is to add a USB port on the back so I can stream uh, in real time from my PC to this projector with uh, open lace alright so let's take this um, projector apart and see what's inside let's remove this A screw on the top to remove this top lid Last screw off, and here is the inside of the laser projector. And let's remove this side cover so we can take a better look inside. And just slide them up and take it off. The build quality looks pretty decent for what this uh, laser projector costs. Uh, this is a controller uh, board for this laser projector. It's controlling the uh, laser output, uh, the Galvo XY output. It's the um, DMX input port, and that's a power supply. In that is the main uh, microcontroller. Here is the uh, power supply. This one is the uh, three laser diode, uh, each one for different uh, RGB channel, and there's a mirror that uh, steer the beam to the galvo. Right, on the bottom here, we got a it's a X axis uh, galvo that's turning in sideways, and that one is uh, up and down uh, Y axis for galvo. On the bottom there is the, is the laser diode driver. There's three channel, one for each of the RGB channel. On the side here we got this Galvo M. It's uh, basically an analog computer that do closed loop PID control using the position feedback from the Galvo. On top here, uh, we got uh, a bunch of uh, potential geometer for calibration the for calibrate the uh, uh, driver board. On the back of the laser projector, is have a small DC fan. Right, that's pretty much it. Uh, so let's uh, take out the controller board so we can take a closer look at it. Two screw holding the controller board on the back. Right, unplug all the cable to free the board from the projector. No, some of the connector is identical, so careful when you put this uh, back. Right, take, let's take a close look at the board. Here is the main microcontroller. It's a GD32F10C chip. Uh, it's a clone of the SDM32. Uh, microcontroller. Right, I will take a picture of this uh, board later and we will reverse engineer it. And let's put it aside for now. All 
Alright, let's take a look at the gobble amp. Um, let's unplug all the cable. Unplug the power supply input, the Yavo XY input. There's a, a little piece of uh, solder wire mm -hmm. stuck on the board. Probably left over from the factory. That's a bit that's dodgy. Yeah, it seems like a, it's a tiny piece of wire left all over on the board. Let's unplug it. There's a uh, two screw holding the board on the bottom. Here's a close look at the gobble amp. It has a, a bunch of uh, op amp and two power amplifier chip. Alright, let's take a look at the laser driver board. There is only one screw holding the board on the bottom. Alright. Uh, this one has many uh, wire that have the same plug and the same color so I'm gonna mark it with a sharpie so I know where to plug it back uh, later Let's unplug all the wire and free the board from the projector. Right, here's the board. It's a very simple, hopefully, that they switch mode regulator. Let's remove the power supply. So here is the power supply. It is the Taifeng uh, brand with uh, 13 uh, volt plus minus output on the right side there's a connector that they flip over so careful which plug you plug into otherwise it would cause uh, inverse polarity and ruin your projector and here I'm just removed the board from the carrier so we can take a picture of the top side and the bottom side of the board uh, to reverse engineer it later Let's put this projector aside for now. Okay, 
I'm gonna put back the school to its location so it's uh, easier to keep track of it. Here is the bottom side of the power supply. Oops, I dropped the screw on the floor. The power amp is insulated to the frame with a plastic washer and thermal drip. Next up is the controller board. Let's take a look at the SD card. Uh, there's some corrosion on the contact there. Some Kingston uh, two gigabyte card. All right, let's take the board off the carrier. Three screw holding the board on. So on the back here we got the uh, DMX uh, input port, Galvo XY, 3 channel for the laser, SE, not sure what it is, uh, in circuit programming port, and uh, is the power supply input. On the font here we got the switches for the user input and a 3.3 volt regulator. That's uh, a flag look like it's a LM358 uh, operational amplifier and that is the DMX uh, transceiver. It's a microphone for the sound activation. That's pretty much it, uh, pretty simple board. Let's bring back up the uh, laser projector so we can look at the uh, Galvo. Alright, so the Galvo is holding on my two screw on the bottom and there's some plastic spacer in between.
case yeah, Yambo is out uh, there isn't pretty much left in the case uh, it's only the laser module there Right here we got the Galvo. Okay, so the Galvo is it a motor with a mirror attached on the end of it? Right, let me open up the back cap to show you the position sensor. Two tiny screw. Uh. Right, you can see here is a. a uh, LED on the bottom and a two photodiode on the other end and there's another piece of uh, black what well, look like black plastic uh, attached to the end of the motor so depending on the position of the motor that uh, it will block out a uh, uh, section of the uh, photodiode and the uh, Galvo end will uh, decode the signal and determine the position of the uh, Galvo that's pretty, that's a pretty simple design. Let's put on the back cap so I won't lose the screw. That's it for the teardown and let's analyze the board. Alright, so let's take a look at the power supply. So here you can see the top side of the power supply. Um, here, this one is the AC input uh, connector. So AC input come in here. Then go to this full bridge uh, rectified diode, and from this uh, for, uh, diode, it connect to this uh, go to this uh, switching MOSFET, and that drive the uh, primary side of this uh, transformer. Right, and the MOSFET is driven by the uh, controller that sit on the bottom of the board. This uh, this uh, controller chip uh, uh, IC one right here. Then uh, on the uh, second side, we got the shunt regulator here that's monitor the output voltage. And that shunt regulator connect to this uh, opto isolator. This opto isolator here. And that uh, feedback into the controller chip. So on the second side, we got this uh, our, uh, diode. This package actually have a two diode pair inside, and uh, here's another diode for the uh, negative rail, and uh, some smoothing cap to smooth out the uh, ripple inside the in the rail. So the interesting here is that they actually only use one uh, uh, one di uh, one diode out inside this uh, package. Inside the package, they actually have two diodes. It's uh, connected uh, like this uh, one diode here, and then another one connected here. Uh, right. 
but here they trim it off the leg they didn't use this uh, as a diode at all so maybe if you can connect this to connect this uh, together then maybe yeah, we was able to support higher current right. that's it for the power supply pretty it's a simple just mode power supply all right so let's take a look at the laser driver board here we got the connector for the um, input voltage from the power supply then uh, it go to this uh, huge diode probably just for uh, reverse polarity protect, uh, protection then uh, here we got uh, three channel one for each of the uh, uh, RGB channel so this is the input side as the output from the uh, controller board go to here then the output uh, size connect to the laser diode and uh, this uh, driver board is based on the uh, PT4115 chip and I have the data sheet here with me so let me show you so the chip is made by Powtech is a LED driver chip it's uh, basically a constant uh, current uh, regulator it's a switch, in, uh, switch mode regulator um, yeah, you can use this uh, uh, to drive uh, LED as well. I mean, drive laser as well. And right, here's the typical uh, application circuit. So uh, the uh, voltage coming in here. Then this is the current sensing uh, resistor. Then the inductor for the output side and. Uh, the load instead we have a laser diode instead of LED then uh, this chip also support dimming so you can uh, uh, use PWM or a DAC output to drive this uh, dimming uh, pin so and um, let's take a look at the board so, so here's the driver chip and this is the uh, current uh, sensing resistor and uh, this uh, diode and the inductor so on the red channel we got here is a 0.4 ohm 0 ohm and 0.4 ohm and uh, green channel we got uh, 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 so 0 0.6 ohm and and on the blue channel we got 0.5 ohm the lower the uh, resistance is the uh, higher the output current so look like the red channel is the highest current than the blue channel than the green so blue is uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and 0.5 ohm okay, that's pretty much it for the laser board, laser driver board Right, this is the uh, Galvo amp. Uh, our uh, reverse engineer is uh, circuit. I scan the top board and the bottom board and uh, put import it to GIMP, then overlay it and trace out all the trace. Then uh, reroll that uh, circuit in uh, KiCad. So uh, this circuit is basically a uh, Half of the circuit, uh, half of this board is a mirror of the itself. Uh, on the left side here is for the X uh, Galvo, and on the right side is for the Y Galvo. Uh, it's pretty much uh, identical. So on this side, so only reverse uh, half of this uh, circuit. So here is the uh, output state amplifier. Then here is a. Uh, uh, two quad op amp that do uh, PD uh, closed loop uh, to control the Galvo and down here we got the uh, potential geometer to uh, calibrate the scale this one for uh, Galvo servo uh, gain uh, low frequency damping and uh, symmetry for the uh, position uh, DMOD circuit 
this circuit is basically a clone of the Cambridge uh, uh, Galvo M uh, C86 uh, 58 uh, zero uh, Cambridge uh, circuit um, so here is my uh, uh, pre-raw of this uh, circuit in KiCad uh, it's basically a clone of the Cambridge M and but uh, missing some of the feature so uh, this circuit had the position demod and uh, the position differential and the error amplifier and the current monitor but uh, missing the uh, the power limiter and the high frequency damping circuit of the original uh, Cambridge uh, C86-58-0 uh, design so uh, let's zoom in a bit here so um, this section is uh, missing from uh, this uh, from the hour board we don't have the temperature calculator or the power limiter that's all they removed it and also this uh, high frequency damping and the uh, current integrator is uh, it's got removed as well and they've replaced it with a uh, set a uh, cap uh, set a uh, small uh, capacitor okay. I will uh, I will include this uh, circuit in this uh, schematic in the description so you can uh, study it uh, yourself All right. uh, let's take a look at the uh, controller board next so here is the controller board uh, this one is the main uh, microcontroller this uh, GD32 F103 uh, MCU is a clone of the STM F1 uh, chip and um, so uh, here is the uh, input uh, voltage uh, input power from the uh, power supply we take in uh, uh, t plus the minus 12 volt then uh, Let's go into this uh, 5 volt regulator for regulating uh, 5 volt for the use 5 volt for this uh, uh, LM358 uh, up and to for the uh, microphone circuit. Okay. This uh, the doing the microphone M. So as you can see here, the only use I have of this M is a dual up amp and the other half they left floating that's a that's a pretty bad they should have uh, you need to terminate uh, op amp uh, properly otherwise um, it could oscillate and um, un uh, unexpected can uh, happen I, um, so this is the DMX input it's basically a RS485 uh, uh, then um, let's go to this uh, uh, transceiver. It's SN seventy five seventeen six B chip. It's uh, just a basically a RS four A five transceiver. Then there's a uh, TSV protection diode for the uh, data plus and minus of the DMX uh, port. Uh, this one here is a uh, HE. I'm not sure what it's for, but uh, they just have a uh, routed uh, one of the PGIO pin here. It's a PA12 GPIO. Uh, of, uh, then uh, we have a uh, ground and 5 volt. Alright, um, so this one is the Galvo XY uh, uh, output. Is uh, uh, this one is uh, the op amp that's uh, uh, that controlling it? Um, so this one is taking um, unipolar uh, DAC output from the microcontroller, then convert it to 
uh, bipolar output, so plus minus 12 volt. Okay. Uh, down here we got the RGB power output. So uh, this uh, GPIO coming out from the MCU, then it go to this uh, 1K resistor, then it's connect to uh, this pin uh, here. Here, so it's only GPIO and a uh, ground. But uh, as the, uh, I mentioned before, the uh, laser driver can do uh, dimming. So with uh, if you can if you add, add another deck. Uh, you can um, change, you can dim the laser but um, this chip only have uh, two DAC channels so you need to add external DAC to use that feature uh, I'll retry uh, uh, PWM uh, to arrive that uh, dimming pin before but uh, 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 maybe the frequency is too low and the I see a bunch of uh, dash uh, instead of a uh, solid line. And here is the uh, in circuit programming port. It's a uh, uh, SWD and JTAG port. So maybe when we can try to use this port later and uh, read out the firmware. Maybe I will do that in the part 2 of the video because this video is uh, it's, uh, pretty long already. And um, here is uh, the YK port. I'm not sure what it's for. It's the uh, same as for the HE port. It's a one GPIO pin and the ground and the five volt. Okay. Also trace out some of the boot pin so we can uh, wrap it into uh, a bootloader mode. Uh, the chip have a bootloader mode that you can put it in and um, uh, you can uh, write uh, or read out the uh, firmware using the UART port and relay over the uh, UART, UART port here uh, RX and TX so to put it to bootloader mode just ground boot 1 and pull boot 0 to 3.3 volt then uh, the chip will then reset the chip it will fall into the bootloader mode all right um all right see you in part two when we try to dumb out the firmware of this uh chip <laughs>